Development is a lifespan process that starts with the conception. Yes, conception triggers the entire developmental process and is a great example of an individual constraint. As you probably know, timing is a critical factor in the fertilization and 90-90% of the sperms will probably fail the fertilization process. Timing is critical because there is a small chance in which the ovum will be fertilized. The chances are firstly reduced because the woman produces an ovum only every 28 days and an ovum survives for only about 24 hours. Let's look at this animation about the ovulation as the first step to understand the fertilization process. Ovulation is a part of the menstrual cycle when the ovary releases a ripe egg or ovum. Inside the ovary are hundreds of thousands of follicles. Each follicle is a hollow ball of cells with an immature egg in the center. The typical 28-day menstrual cycle begins on the first day of menstrual bleeding. During the first seven days of the cycle, a few follicles begin to grow at the same time. These maturing follicles secrete estrogen hormone into the bloodstream to prepare the lining of the uterus for pregnancy. Around day seven, all of the follicles stop growing and begin to degenerate except for one. This dominant follicle continues to grow and nourishes the developing egg inside it. Around day 12, the follicle secretes a large amount of estrogen into the bloodstream. When the estrogen reaches the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland in the brain, the anterior or front part of the pituitary gland releases a huge surge of luteinizing hormone into the bloodstream. Around day 14, Luteinizing hormone causes the follicle to undergo a sudden growth spurt. Right before ovulation, the egg detaches from the inside of the follicle. The bulging follicle releases chemicals, causing one of the two fallopian tubes to move in closer and surround the follicle. The follicle swells until it bursts open, ejecting the egg and fluid from the follicle into the abdominal cavity. In response, the fimbriae, tiny projections at the end of the fallopian tube, sweep across the ovulation site and pick up the egg. Microscopic cilia on the fimbriae surface transport the egg to the entrance of the fallopian tube. Inside the walls of the fallopian tube, muscular contractions gently push the egg towards the uterus. After ovulation, the egg lives for 12 to 24 hours so it must be fertilized by a sperm from the male during this time for a woman to become pregnant. If it's not fertilized, the egg dissolves away and is shed along with the uterine lining during menstruation. Typical prenatal development begins with the fertilization and ends with birth, lasting between 266 and 280 days for about 38 to 40 weeks. The prenatal development is usually divided into three different periods, the zygotic, the embryonic, and the fetal periods. Learning about these specific changes during these three periods will lead us to a better understanding of how various cells will transform into different parts of our body. In this video then, we'll look at the beginning of development, looking into the ovary at an unfertilized egg. It then gets fertilized by sperm, which travel down the fallopian tube. So here, millions of sperm coming along. Several of them will hit the egg and try to penetrate it, but one will win, as it were, go into the nucleus. And then there's a reprogramming process where the male and female nuclei have their genes uh, set aside to be turned on and off for early development. Here you see early cleavage stages occurring and this is one of the early growth phases. As the embryo moves down the fallopian tube, it's going to form an important stage called the blastocyst here in a few seconds. Of course, in real life, that takes days, about five days. At this stage, then, I'd like to draw your attention to the inside of the blastocyst, where there are cells called the inner cell mass which I'll be abbreviating as ICM. Those are the cells that make the entire animal. And the outer cells give rise to the placenta and other supporting tissues. At this stage, the embryo implants into the wall of the uterus. This is when a pregnancy is really initiated. 
And now we'll see those blue inner cell mast cells form a disc. And then as the cells continue to grow, they change their physical positions, their kind of geographical relationship to one another. And you'll see that represented here as this disc gets transformed into an embryo. Those lines represent sites where cells are migrating in and out. And here's an important stage when the three beginning layers of the embryo, the so-called germ layers, are formed. And I'll come back to that in a few minutes. As development proceeds, there's more growth and movement of cells. It'll begin to form a neural tube. Here it turns and appendages start to bud out. You see the head forming and the eye. And then eventually we get a small embryo. And some months later, of course, this would be born as a young baby. Let's start with the first one, the zygotic period. This is a period of prenatal development that takes place in the first two weeks after conception. It includes the creation of the fertilized egg called a zygote, cell division, and the attachment of the zygote to the uterine wall. The attachment of the zygote to the uterine wall takes place about 11 to 15 days after conception, and this process is called implantation. At this stage, the group of cells, now called the blastocyst, consists of an inner mass of cells that will eventually develop into the embryo, and the trophoblast, another layer of cells that later will provide nutrition and support for the embryo. Rapid cell division by the zygote continues throughout the zygotic period. By approximately one week after conception, the differentiation process of these cells will start. They will specialize for different tasks. What is very interesting here is to realize that timing and constraints are present during this process. Note that a female produces an ovule only every 28 days, and an ovule survives for only about 24 hours. This is the first constraint in this process. On the other hand, a male produces sperm in a quantity of 300 million approximately per day, a total amount that could eventually fertilize almost all women in the US if you needed a proportion of one to one. However, a sperm survived for about only 48 hours, which is another constraint in this process. So a first and probably the only one example of a critical period in development is that the maximum fertile period is 72 hours out of 28 days. But let's move into the another period. The embryonic period occurs from two to eight weeks after conception. During the embryonic period, the rate of cell differentiation intensifies. As you could see in this video, the cells start to migrate in and out, and three beginning layers of the embryo will start to be formed. The layers are ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. An early differentiation process will start as development proceeds, leading us to a formation of different parts of our human body. The mesoderm, for example, is the middle layer, which will become the circulatory system, bones, muscles, the excretory system, and reproductive system. The ectoderm is the outermost layer, which will become the nervous system and brain. The sensory receptors, like our ears, nose, and eyes, and the skin parts, like hair, nails, for example. Every body part eventually develops from these three layers. So in summary, the endoderm primarily produces internal body parts. The mesoderm primarily produces parts that surround the internal areas. And the ectoderm primarily produces the surface parts. As the embryo's three layers form, life support systems for the embryo develop rapidly. These life support systems include the amnion, the umbilical cord, both which develop from the fertilized egg, not the mother's body, and the placenta. Later, we will notice a clear direction on the development of the central nervous system. The directions are two. Cephalocaudal, which means cephalic structures will develop first and the structures close to the end of our spinal cord will develop later. At the same time, the development proceeds to be proximal distal, which means that central areas of our body will start developing before the peripheral parts. This is the distal parts. Note that both directions happen at the same time simultaneously. Here is how prenatal structural and functional changes happen 
during the early periods of our lives. Pregnancy and delivery involve the entire female reproductive system, including the ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, and vagina. After an egg is released from an ovary and is fertilized, it travels slowly through the fallopian tube to the uterus. During this time, it begins to divide until it has grown to about 100 cells. The egg, now called a blastocyst, then implants in the tissue lining the wall of the uterus. The uterus will then house and protect the developing fetus for 38 weeks, or approximately nine months. When the fetus has matured and birth is imminent, the baby begins to go through a series of movements that help it navigate through the birth canal. As the uterus begins to contract with the pains of labor, the opening of the uterus, called the cervix, dilates to allow the baby to pass into the vagina. This muscular tube expands to accommodate the baby's head and shoulders, while uterine contractions continue until the baby enters the world in what is in most cases a downward facing position. At this point, the baby will be cleaned and checked for good health before being placed on its mother's chest to rest and bond.